is Robert Harding, the Citizens Political Reporter, and I'm joined by Peter Oberacker, Republican candidate for the 51st State Senate District. And here I was worried about <laughs> pronouncing your name right, and I nailed it. So how about that? <laughs> um, so Peter, uh, let's get started uh, with you know just just tell people uh, why you decided to run for uh, State Senate in the in the 51st. to me that he was going to retire and felt that um, I should consider you know, the potential for running for this seat. And after a couple of uh, moments and got off the phone and spoke to my bride of 34 years just this past, uh, celebrated her 34th this past Sunday, I can't tell you exactly what she said, but uh, it was crazy some few more discussion and, and, and a little bit more cajoling she gave me her, her blessing and and really what it, what it boiled down to and then, and then morphed into was you know with my local governance experience with my county uh, legislative experience I felt as though that I am here to not only protect but uh, to continue with the, the, the lifestyle of carrying that through to my family and to ultimately to my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. well, based on your experience, uh, because you are a, a Siegel County legislator, uh, and, and of course you, uh, you're also a business owner as well. Uh, so I wanted to start with the business background. You know, what, uh, you know, I'm sure you have a lot of experience from this, uh, but what, uh, uh, what do you think needs to be done to improve the business climate here in New York State? top-down type of philosophy uh, where, you know, the government says, uh, we understand you and here's a plan uh, when in reality it should be the other way up. It should be from the, from the bottom up. It should be listening to what these business people are saying. What, what is really their concern? What is important to them? And um, once you determine that, then the path is clear. Uh, be setting up systems in place to, uh, to assist small businesses. So it, it really needs to be a bottom up as opposed to a top down type of uh, scenario. And uh, I think if, if, if nothing else, if governance was the way the government was to go uh, right now, we would see a huge improvement in the business sector. So that coupled with your uh, local government experience, you know, you, you certainly know how, uh, you certainly know the dynamics there uh, between the local and state governments. Uh, how, how can that experience aid you, you know, on the other side of it, if you're elected to the state Senate and obviously making policy and, and uh, making budget decisions uh, that, that would impact local governments? You know, really it, it boils down to fully understanding the impact that ultimately has on, you know, how first start out. Chips, which uh, is, is what really funds some of the most municipal highway departments and highway improvements and, and things of that nature. And um, you know, there's almost 80 percent of my budget when it comes to supervisor. And you know, there is some talk about cutting back or using, or just even the fact that um, we weren't sure how much they were going to use it and when. 
those things put uh, local municipalities at a disadvantage. They really don't. You know, uh, the, the, the miscommunication, the lack of communication, is really detrimental to, to the uh, budgets. On the county side, um, I can see where all those mandates and uh, are being pushed down. Detrimental to uh, to run a, a good government, uh, a good county. So uh, Albany has to realize that if they really uh, those decisions that are made again from top down and bottom up, response. With my experience, putting together those budgets, sitting on a budget committee, being the chair of public works in Otsego County, I feel as though that that'll be a huge advantage to understand not only how it's set up. How it's allocated, but more importantly, how it's spent in those budgets. Yeah. Uh, an issue I, I know we talked a little bit about uh, in our in our first interview is is broadband, uh, and uh, certainly there's a great need for it, uh, especially across uh, the 51st. Uh, it's a it's a largely rural district, uh, and I know from uh, the parts of Cayuga County that are in the district. There's six towns in Cayuga County that uh, that are in the 51st that, you know, this is a real challenge, the access to high speed internet. So, you know, I know that the state has had some initiatives in the past, but what more do you think needs to be done to achieve this goal of, uh, you know, extending broadband to all? Robert, it's real easy, two words, get serious. And, and I say that because in my case, Senator, I do not need any more on that broadband. And in this day and age, you know, uh, post-COVID, if you will, or pre, you know, pre, pre COVID nineteen distance uh, learning uh, that came to light. Uh, heck, I had kids actually. Believe it or not, we have our parking lot here out in front of our office, and uh, they were having to hook up to our here in the office where we do have broadband. Uh, they had to hook up to it just to do their, their, their distance learning to get some of their, uh, their, their homework assignments and things of that nature. So uh, it's get serious. I mean, it's akin to years ago having electric cars in the house. And uh, I feel as though having this personal experience and having the ability uh, to help facilitate uh, as chair of public works, I was able to actually get some companies to look at our towers, to negotiate some deals with them, to also not only look at the broadband issue, Robert, but kind of dovetails with the uh, cell service as well. And I'm kind of proud to say that uh, my public works committee, we were able to work with uh, some other companies and take some of the, the tower spots that we have in the public that they were looking for, we swapped out the, for, um, you know, the better sites, if you will, and uh, we were able to negotiate a deal to where in our, our course area, we can now take cell service in there that was never really covered by cell service. So again, it, it, it comes down to some experience, it comes down to uh, identifying what the issue is and then getting serious about uh, the solutions for it. So get serious. That's the You know, with the uh, taxes, I think, are uh, uh, certainly something that gets uh, discussed a lot, not only in campaigns, but in governing, because uh, uh, certainly in New York, uh, depending on what you're looking at, uh, income taxes, business taxes, what have you, uh, property taxes, uh, there's, uh, you know, certainly concerns that, uh, you know, that's, that's uh, you know, causing some economic problems, uh, whether it's, you know, leading to people uh, leaving or what have you, businesses leaving. So, you know, in terms of that, you know, from a state perspective, uh, you know, what do you think needs to be done to uh, lower the tax burden uh, in, in New York State? And again, you know, when you look at uh, the municipal budgets and you have the revenue streams and the allocation, 
conditions of what you're spending the money for. Um, it's been said before, and it's really true. All that he has is spending power. And all that he has been issued with getting the most bang for our buck, if you will. When you're in our business, we use the term ROI, right? What is the return on investment? And I really feel that, um, yes, taxes are an issue. We spend correctly if we invest that amount of those uh, revenue streams into areas that will bring us an ROI or return on our investment. Um, our, our, our taxes uh, uh, will, will actually level out if we don't have those. And then the other thing, you know, it does come to taxes. I will tell you this: I have uh, very proudly been able to stay as a former supervisor, kept our, our tax cap. spent that money, where it was best allocated, and then where did I get the most, is that the bang for the buck, our return on investment. So um, there's areas to look at for reducing taxes, but more, more appropriately, I think, is, is the spending side of things as well. Get our hands on it. Uh, I know that, um, you know, one thing that uh, the state government has grappled with over the years is, is public corruption. Uh, there have been some legislative efforts, uh, you know, in the, in this area to, uh, to kind of root out corruption and, and, you know, impose different ethics rules for not only lawmakers and elected officials, but, uh, uh, but those who, who are in state service, uh, you know, as employees. So, um, you know, it, I know that uh, there, there seems to be bipartisan agreement on the fact uh, that there needs to be more done to address this. Uh, I, I guess in terms of addressing public corruption, you know, what would you like to see uh, to make sure that uh, folks are following the rules and uh, that we achieve uh, true ethics reform in Albany? Good question. Um, enforce the laws, number one. I mean, enforce the laws to get that done. And again, have, a, have an independent Setting the tone, if you will, for uh, let's get some ethics back into this. Let's get uh, let, let's not lose sight of what we are put here for—the public service side of things. And I believe if we were to enforce those laws, set up that that, that independent committee instead of that one bipartisan committee together, we're, we're on the right track. I don't. This is a concern uh, across the district, but especially for. Uh, the towns uh, that would in Cuyahoga County that are that are part of the 51st uh, water quality uh, is a huge issue. You know, with the Wasco Lake here, and uh, that that of course is a primary uh, drinking water source for uh, many residents uh, in, in the county, especially where I am. I'm in uh, the city of Auburn, uh, which I know is outside the 51st, but uh, certainly uh, uh, close enough uh, to to where you'll be. Um, uh, so with that, uh, you know, what do you think we need to do at the state level? There's been a lot of different efforts, uh, whether it's uh, addressing invasive species or uh, combating uh, harmful algal blooms. Uh, so, you know, how do you continue those efforts in the state Senate? I know this is something that Senator Seward has worked on. Uh, so how, how, how do you plan on continuing those efforts uh, if you're elected to the state Senate? that I would like to see is uh, we have some really great higher ranking academia, if you will, uh, colleges. 
is close by. And I really think that uh, instead of, again, the state or the involvement coming in and saying, you know, here's our answer to the problem, um, I think you get the two groups, the stakeholders involved. I think you get the invite, I think you get the science. starts with the conversation. It starts with uh, identifying the issues on both sides and uh, working towards a conclusion to it. But I, I you know, as a food scientist, and you know, science is very important, and uh, I think there are some issues that are working in. I, I would look at uh, uh, technologies out there that could uh, really help that whole situation. So facilitate, you know, I could uh, help folks together and uh, start that conversation. With, um, uh, you know, with economic development uh, programs at the state level, uh, there's been a lot of scrutiny of these programs, a lot of money spent, uh, billions of dollars spent uh, on these programs over the years uh, with, you know, some Obviously, good stories, uh, you know, feel good stories about businesses that are creating jobs and uh, investing here and, and really thriving here. Uh, but then uh, uh, some other stories of money being spent and, and you're not seeing that return on investment, uh, so to speak, that ROI that you talk about. You know, with the, with the state economic development approach, uh, you know, what do you think we need to do differently uh, to ensure that, uh, you know, we're not only helping uh, businesses that are already here, but we're attracting more businesses uh, uh, coming in. Well, number one, we, we, we should really look at rewarding those companies that are here. I believe that uh, I, we were at a, at, a, at a synopsis, we were at a, a meeting, and uh, they brought up the same question, what would I do for economics? And I, I said it was, um, you know, finding that, that need, going out, sourcing uh, potential customers and, and companies to uh, to um, uh, come into, you know, to come into the. Uh, let me move this a little bit closer. There we go. Yeah. Um, and we really have forgotten about those that are here. So, so the so the first key to economics and, and economic is is stability. Stabilize those companies that are leaving. Um, you know, it, it gets hard to attract. A, uh, I think companies come to New York when they see the, the exodus of those that are leaving. So we got to build that foundation. We have to make companies here feel like a they're wanted, two that they're rewarded, and then from there, we then I think look at getting private investors I think we, look, we need to put private investors together with these companies that are that are uh, doing a great job and uh, true economic development may be not so much always looking for the you know the 800 job uh, new company coming in because of all the incentives that they require to, to come here Robert I think it would be getting a private in, uh, investor maybe together and taking a, a smaller company investing in that getting another 50 jobs and maybe elevating a, a smaller company to a, a mid-sized company. I think that approach to economic development is easier. I think it's, it, it actually uh, is a more realistic uh, formula for economic development. And always looking at you know the large company with all the large dollars, with pilot programs and tax incentives and those type of things. Um, it, it sometimes I wonder if it really is a, a good return. The state's bail reform law that took effect in January uh, has certainly uh, uh, been a, a lightning rod, <laughs> shall we say. Uh, but I, you know, coupled with that, I, I did want to get your thoughts on, on not only bail reform, you know, what, what needs to be done there. I know that there were some amendments made to it uh, this year, uh, but it seems like, you know, there's still a, a desire to do more with, with that uh, to, to improve it. Uh, but also with uh, this push for police reform, uh, the state, uh, you know, just recently 
uh, adopted, you know, various police reforms, you know, in the area of transparency, for example, uh, with records. Uh, so, you know, wanted to get your thoughts on both of those things on how, you know, you know, whether you, you think that, you know, any reforms are needed uh, in those areas, but also how you would approach it, you know, what, what things you think need to be done, uh, you know, whether it's uh, policing or, uh, you know, on the subject of cash bail. that was passed is an absolute disaster. And, and I say that uh, because I've seen it firsthand uh, sitting on my committee, um, you know, public safety committee from Otsego County. And what we've been essentially done is we've taken individuals uh, that um, having gone through you know, the process and the system and, and basically thrown them back out onto the streets, not always in the best way. And, and, and here's something to consider, Robert, that I don't think a, a lot of other um, legislators and, and potentially folks have seen because they're, they're, they're not that engaged to it. A lot of those individuals having issues with substance abuse, uh, opioid, uh, you know, the over, opioid pandemic that we've seen, actually, first instances that they would get for either, uh, some sort of mental health service or, or um, counseling and, and those types of issues is really when they have been incarcerated. And what we have done, and I've seen this firsthand, is these individuals that have come into the system and are let loose back into that environment, it, it, it's detrimental to them in that aspect as well. So um, we've taken the judges out of it. The, judges, uh, my mom being a local judge, understood the local individuals, knew probably more than uh, any of our other uh, you know, judges that, that are making these decisions for, for these individuals. So um, I, I think it was, again, a, a, uh, it may have had all the best intentions in mind, but the, but the consequences that we've seen since then uh, are really detrimental. And um, there's no doubt that With um, uh, looking at uh, the state's, you know, environmental and, and energy policies, you know, to kind of piggyback on on the points about uh, uh, water quality, uh, there's certainly this uh, uh, desire to, you know, try to address climate change while also addressing, you know, the state's uh, energy needs. Uh, curious to get your thoughts on, you know, how what do you think the best approach is there? There's certainly a push to uh, to, to get renewables, uh, whether it's wind, solar. Uh, I know that there's, you know, wind farms being, uh, you know, constructed, solar pan solar arrays being installed. So, you know, how, how do you balance those things, uh, you know, with the energy needs and uh, uh, obviously uh, addressing climate change in the environment? Uh, energy is, is, a, is a huge uh, issue and, and one that, as a businessman, I'm, I'm very tied into it. You know, our, our companies uh, require energy and um, uh, the sources of those, the cost of those, those are all, you know, metrics that are very, very interesting, very important. Um, you know, the renewables and, and solar wind, uh, as, as a supervisor here in the town of Maryland, believe it or not, we had um, worked with a uh, potential wind company and we approved a uh, wind farm at that time to come into the town of excited about the possibilities that it would have offered to our local school and to potentially, you know, to some of our businesses. Uh, I worked really hard on, a, believe it or not, a project here again in the town for a, uh, a distribution center site. Uh, we have uh, identified a distribution site here in the town for somewhere around a half to three quarter million square foot uh, site. And the building will lend itself Solar and for solar panels. So, um, you know, one size does not fit all when it comes to energy. I'm, I'm really interested in, in looking at many sources, many, many forms of it. Uh, I don't think any one is, is uh, the, the answer uh, 100%. I, I like to see actually a, uh, a mixture of those options. And, 
you know, when it comes down to the uh, economics from a household to a business, they need to make those options. Geothermal is one that I'm, I'm really starting to get uh, without being punish and warm and fuzzy about it. It's, uh, it's actually uh, something very, uh, very interesting to, uh, to look at. A couple more questions for you. I, I did want to get your thoughts on education. Uh, I know this is an issue uh, that uh, Senator Seward uh, worked on as well, uh, you know, here in, in Cuga County uh, with uh, the Auburn School District, which does extend into your, your uh, Senate district. Uh, and then, uh, you know, Moravia, uh, certainly, uh, among others, you know, in, in other parts of the 51st. But, you know, this has been a, a, a long standing uh, uh, effort to try and get uh, high need uh, school districts uh, the aid that they feel that they they deserve quite frankly that 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 that's owed to them um, you know what what will you do in terms of advocating you know for those school districts especially you know in, in the more rural parts of the state to to ensure that they get uh, the school aid they need especially in this uh, in this pandemic uh, which is really putting a strain on, on many school districts across the state you know you, you really hit on it coming from uh, a rural area such as Skanevis and, and, and there's no uh, uh, Skanevis has gone through uh, some financial issues that are, are well known and uh, a lot of that is due to the fact that uh, Albany has held back and or uh, reduced the uh, aid that was going to the schools and if, if you look at it at, at any community, the school is a, if not the essential, one of the major essential parts of your community. And I, I think it's uh, it's a sad day, it's a sad state of affairs when we can't find the money to properly fund these institutions. Now, again, you know there are costs involved, there are budgets, and, and we all kind of. You know, look at uh, at that, and there, there's probably some trimming that could be done in these budgets. But 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 by and large, we really need to make that a priority. We need to find again spending side of the equation, return on investment. Let's invest in our schools. Let's invest in our students. Let's invest in them in hopes that they stay here as a brain trust for us. And I, I mean, what better way uh, to invest in the state than, than in its uh, in its youth? I, I'm. I'm really interested in trying to find um, that type of funding in these rural districts. Uh, and then to close, uh, you know, what types of things will motivate you uh, in this job if you're elected to state senator? It's uh, certainly an important task uh, that, that, uh, that'll be ahead of you if you're elected. Uh, so, uh, you know, what, what types of things will motivate you uh, every day uh, when you get up and uh, go represent the people of 51st? First is being pop pop. Uh, I recently um, uh, was fortunate enough for my daughter uh, to have a granddaughter, and um, so so family it becomes very 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 important, very a very motivational force for me uh, moving forward. You know, I would love for them to have the type of experience I've had growing up in, in upstate New York. I, there isn't, and I think we can all agree, there's not a more beautiful place in the world. And I've been all over the world in, in business. I've been fortunate enough to, to you know, have traveled the world. I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be able to say I've slept in all 50 states. Um, and I come back to upstate New York. It, it's an absolute beautiful area. So uh, motivation is family, number one. Uh, second motivation is service. I, 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 I serve uh, locally. I'm, I run local governance. I've served County, uh, in, again, as, as, as I, I serve as a volunteer firefighter and, and EMS provider. So, services is, is another good part or a great part of, of the motivation for me uh, here in the 51st. And more importantly, I am going to carry that service and I'm going to carry the voice of, of all of you, all of the you know, constituents here in upstate New York, and more importantly, in the 51st. I hear them, I, I feel I know them, and uh, I will be their advocate when I get there. 
Peter Oberacker, the Republican candidate for state Senate in the 51st district. Uh, it's a big district. It, do you know all the counties in it, Peter? Ultimate test here. Do I know them all? Yes. Yeah. So we start with Ulster, we go to Delaware, we go to Schoharie, we're uh, at Seago, we're Herkimer, we are Swath through Shenango, we're Portland, we are uh, Cayuga, and we are Tompkins. There you go. Not bad, not bad. Pop quiz. I know that because I've been traveling them, so. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's good, that's good. Well, great, well, uh, uh, great catching up with you. Thanks so much uh, for joining us today, and uh, a reminder to all the, uh, the readers and viewers out there that uh, absentee uh, voting is underway. Uh, uh, the applications, uh, uh, I think, are, are going out, and uh, people have requested those, and, and the ballots are being sent. There's already some ballots that have been cast, and uh, then we got early voting that starts uh, you know, just uh, really just a little over two weeks. Uh, October 24th runs through November 1st, uh, and then Election Day is uh, Tuesday, November 3rd. So get out there and vote if you're in the uh, 51st district. Uh, again, Peter, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, Robert. Appreciate it. Have a good day. You too.